While this foundation is clearly one of Chris and Dana's great legacy, please welcome to the stage their greatest legacy, Will Reeve. As a young kid, I never really understood what they were talking about because to me, mom and dad were the, the people who forced me to eat broccoli and turn the TV off to do my homework. I, I never consciously viewed them as inspirations then, but their heroic efforts shaped who I am today and who I hope to become tomorrow. Mom and Dad made such an effort to try to retain a sense of normalcy in our lives that Dad's paralysis was never a huge obstruction. There were certainly things that we could no longer do together. I never got to toss a baseball around with him, and I can't ever remember giving or receiving a high five. At the same time, though, I never felt a longing for a different type of experience, probably because, despite his disability, Dad was, he was just always there. He, he and Mom made sure that I was not deprived of a father-son relationship simply due to his disability. Some of my fondest memories of our family take place in our driveway where I'm running around playing one sport or another and my dad's watching me with a smile on his face the size of Texas. Family members bond together, support each other, and go on to focus on what they can do rather than what they cannot. Loved ones and caregivers are often the unsung heroes, quietly holding everything together behind the scenes. So tonight, in addition to celebrating the amazing accomplishments of the 1.275 million Americans living with a spinal cord injury, we are also celebrating the family members who support, encourage, and care for them. Each family member and each loved one are to be commended for the irreplaceable role that they play. And now I invite you to hear from a few of them in their own words. My husband and I received the phone call that no parent wants to receive. This man handed me a piece of paper that said, your son, Alan, is lying on a beach. Luke decided to go skiing with his buddies, building a, a jump in a park that's nearby. And we received a phone call. It was the 4th of July, 11 years ago. We were at a pool party with um, our family's closest friends, and he dove into the shallow end of the pool. We came back from the, from the day at the mountain, and there was a voicemail on the, on the machine at the hotel basically saying, you know, call home. Um, there's been a terrible accident. And I remember my mom coming into the waiting room, like collapsing when we found out. So that's how we knew. We went from just being an independent 17-year-old kid that was a star athlete across multiple sports and um, was hot, you know, very popular, to being um, and highly and very independent to being just completely dependent for everything. To realize the limitations physically, living in New York and getting around and how every, everything, opening a door, uh, going to a restaurant, movie, a theater. And I just missed the opportunities for him living his own life. You know, I wish he'd come home late with his car. Um, I wish he'd, you know, get another speeding ticket. Uh, I, I wish he, you know, he could do more things on his own. It's not the same world that you're living in after an injury like this, but it can't be discounted. It's a different kind of normalcy, but you can still find your own way. He's the same person. I mean, if you spend just a few minutes with Jesse, you'll see that, you know, you forget within a minute that he even has that chair. He's gotten on with his life. He's living his life. He's not, he hasn't taken, he's, he hasn't stopped doing anything. He's done everything thing he wants to do. He decided he wanted to go surf 10-foot waves in Fiji, and he figured out a way to get out there and, and go surfing in some of the most dangerous waves in the world. His goal was to walk at graduation, and he got up on a modified walker with two trainers, and he walked and got his diploma. I think that Alan's greatest accomplishment, and one that I'm most proud of, is him having two wonderful children and a wonderful family. The things that I have seen, Michael, do and accomplish have amazed me. And I think I would say that to, to another mom or dad. Don't be surprised if your child doesn't absolutely blow you away with what they can do. I think hope is just, I think, probably a function of independence. And whether it's a care or whether it's a cure or whether it's quality of life, whatever can contribute to that independence, I think takes people one step closer to hope.